What's up, Trey? It's so good to see you again. I've missed this space with you. Yeah, you know, it has been a really long time and you've been really busy in the community. You know, we have talked uh, before about the need for self-care. We've talked about breathing. We've talked about Qigong in general, but now you're really out here bringing it to the people. And I know this has been like a real huge part of what you've wanted to do. Tell us how this has evolved for you as you're bringing it out to community. You know, it's been such a blessing to have this opportunity. It's something I visualized about for a long time in my journey. When we talked about breathing and meditation, I would take that into my meditations and really see myself being able to share what I do with the community. And so for the last several weeks, I've been partnered with Federal Way School District. I've been teaching Qigong to fifth graders and all the way up to eighth graders inside of Federal Way High School. Um, I've been teaching about mindfulness, teaching Qigong, teaching breathing and techniques like that to, to overcome stress, right? To deal with even test taking anxiety. I know one child, he had an issue with watching anime. He was afraid of watching anime. We were able to work on, on that so he could go to, the, the culmination of the event was to actually go to a movie that was kind of anime, right? He was able to go to that movie and watch the, the show and had a good time. So, you know, just working through problems, working through challenges and really empowering children to do well, to be well, to be healthy, um, not to be fearful, to overcome anxiety and worries and concerns and things of that nature. It's been a blessing. So I partner with Federal Way School District. I'm actually active right now in Renton. So we're teaching at Dem Demet Middle School right now, teaching Qigong. It's a six month, six week engagement. We'll be back in April again to start it up again. So it's just continually going on. I'm teaching Qigong to families and children there. So I have some, some kids that are four and five years old, all the way up to 15, 16 years old and their parents, large classes, about 28 people inside of there. So really enjoying that opportunity to share. It's amazing to hear all this uh, work being out here in community, particularly for young people, because when we can establish the practices and behaviors and habits around around healing, around understanding the idea that we have the power to control what's going on in our minds. It, we don't just have to accept everything. We also have the power to calm it down, to slow it down, to quiet the noise. How have these young folks been receiving this and the families? How, how has the response been? Because I'm sure this is uh, very new for a lot of those folks. One of the, the best stories I had was after the event was over, it was four weeks, like I said, we culminated by going to the movies. We took them to a private screening of a movie. Um, after the movie was over, one of my students ran up to me. He missed the last session. He ran up to me, he was like, Mr. Heru, Mr. Heru. He has mom in tow. He brought his mother over and he was like, I'm really sorry. I wanted to be at the last class. You know, and this is a, this is a little fifth grader, right? He's like, I really wanted to be at the last class. I'm sorry I missed it. And I was like, you know, it's no big deal. We'll see you next time. And his mother came and talked to me and asked as he walked away, she goes, you know, I got to thank you. And I was like, well, for what? You know, just get to hang out with kids all day and teach Qigong is kind of my thing, right? And she was like, no, he's been dealing with anxiety for a very long time. And he said, every time he left your class, he felt better about himself and who he was. He felt calmer and more happy, right? And she goes, I've seen a difference at home. And I was like, wow, that just, you know, that tells me I'm doing something right. At least, you know, one thing I did right there. So it's fun, you know, and the idea of Qigong and sharing it with people is really about healing the psyche, healing our psyches and souls, particularly among our people. We spend a lot of time identifying with our trauma, a lot of time aligning with our failures, our, our, our brokenness and things like that. The time has come really for us to embrace who we are, actually are and, and align with our power, right? Align with our, our, our peaceful nature, align with our oneness with all things, align with our wisdom and intuition, really, and then embrace our power, our collective power, and become who we're designed to be. You know, when we align with our trauma, we end up acting out traumas a lot of times. And so let's let's align with our power and our potential and become great, right? Yeah, well, I, I, this is why I really appreciate these kinds of segments, because we can talk at length, at probably agnosium, when it comes to all of the issues, particularly in Black communities and with Black families, when we think about knowing that certain things are passed down in our DNA, we realize that, you know, there's these histories that we carry forward with us when we don't have these practices in mind about how to release all of that from our own bodies. And Qigong has been one of those things that I personally have found to do exactly that. But it's like before you just think you're alone and you have to try to figure it out or you go to things that, you know, are like 
oh, I just need therapy. I need to just talk it out and talk with somebody who can maybe give me some tips, you know, or I need to go to medication because it's that bad for me. I need something that's going to just medicate me enough to calm myself down. But there are all of these ancient practices that are now really resurfacing in so many communities globally where we understand the power of our own uh, ability to heal ourselves. And so I love hearing stories like that. I'm sure it really resonates with you to know that your work is having an impact. When you think about how you've been bringing it out uh, every Saturday, you have a Qigong class, it's open to the public, you know, people have been showing up in that class and experiencing these benefits. How has that been going since the last time we touched it base? Oh, it's been going well, you know, we've not missed a beat every Saturday. We're at nine o'clock. Um, I had to adjust it for some of the, the classes I was teaching in the school district, but every Saturday at nine o'clock on Zoom, people can just jump into these free spaces. We want a whole space for healing. So for these free spaces, people can come in and they've been actually, you know, working through some things, working through some lifelong problems, learning how to love again, learning how to be free again, you know, learning how to embrace their, who they are, I'm learning how to heal and grow, which is super powerful. You know, it's, it's so it's such an enjoyable thing, you know, to see people in the moment actually overcome a, something they've been dealing with for, you know, 10, 12 years. Right. And, and so after I hear those stories, after I see those moments or experience those times, I get to go and do more Qigong, you know, I was like, okay, I got to spend more time doing more Qigong, practicing more, learning more about this ancient art. It's been around for 3,500 years. Right. So these ancients really understood that this was a powerful part of who we are, what we need to do. We got to practice breathing. We got to practice healing. We got to practice transcending the stress. We don't have to embrace the stress. We don't have to walk around with it and carry it, allow it to affect our bodies, to to uh, to damage our lifestyles and our life uh, force and things of that nature. We can uplift it. Right. We can overcome it. We can use that healing too, then to then to change our communities. Right. So why not do better for ourselves? And, you know, if I can do that with Qigong, then that's an easy thing to do. And I and I enjoy it. You know? Yeah. Well, that really takes me to my next question here, because clearly there has to be a very strong practice, personal practice for yourself uh, of Qigong and of incorporating all of these lessons into your own life for you to be able to bring them out to others. Uh, give us a sneak peek of what that's like for you. Oh, for me, it's like getting up at 340 in the morning, pouring libation to the ancestors, practicing some Qigong for a while, going to work because I have a day job, um, then practicing sometimes at lunch, getting off work and practicing after work. I'm running some sessions too. I teach a, a Wednesday night meditation and typically we open with Qi healing or Qigong. You know, we practice that, but it's also a lifestyle change. You know, Qigong is about changing your behaviors, patterns of behavior. So seeing and recognizing patterns in your life, seeing where you're making some mistakes and going, okay, I'm going to adjust here and committing to that adjustment, but also taking that, that, that mindset into the Qigong practice, visualizing yourself doing better than you were doing yesterday. Then, then taking advantage of, of the opportunity before you go to bed and judging yourself. Like, what did I do today? How did I do? Right. And really evaluating that and, and making a commitment then tomorrow to do better. Right. And then during tomorrow, actually doing better, right? So it's always an ongoing process of evolution. It's, it's, it's about this pathway to enlightenment, right? To embracing wisdom, to growing as 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 as, as humans, that some of, some of us call us, or, or as, you know, spiritual beings is what, you, what I like to call us, and evolving as a spiritual being, right? Not just aligning with, okay, I'm gonna be swayed by every emotion. I'm not gonna be upset with my manager when they talk crazy to me or something. I'm not gonna be upset when my, my kids don't wanna go to sleep or whatever. I'm not gonna be upset when I don't feel well. I'm not gonna be sad and anxious about things, but I'm gonna be peaceful at all times. And taking advantage of, oh, I can, I can breathe now. Let me relax, let me calm down. Let me close my mouth, like we talked about before, and just breathe in through my nose and, and offset that parasympathetic system, or start that parasympathetic system and offset the sympathetic system that wants to encourage us to, you know, have a stressful response to something. Yeah. yeah. Well, a, a lot of this too, I mean, you know, we've been talking to uh, life coaches, you know, we know that there are so many great tips and tricks that people have been implementing in their lives to really create new patterns of behavior. And a lot of that is self-reflective work. And then I, I am listening to you and it's like, okay, there's a whole understanding that Qigong is another level too to that, right? In terms of 
Now you have a practice, something that you can do that will hold you accountable to that because it does change your mindset in terms of these I, these events in your life that could be deemed as stressful events or difficulties or d- people in your life. But you have a practice now that says, actually, no, I, I, I'm reminding myself that that's not what it is and that these are opportunities for me to develop. Uh, this has been a, an amazing, uh, I think, line of work to bring out now in particular, because we're seeing so much ancestral knowledge cut, come back into play. How do you see Qigong being such a major part of how people are embracing a lot of ancestral practices and bringing that knowledge back into their lives? You know, a lot of the, the, things that you brought up before around the medication and psychiatry and things like that. There, we need that stuff in our lives for sure. But a lot of people are finding out that it wasn't working, right? Um, the self-help tips weren't necessarily working, right? With Qigong, people are seeing in these ancient techniques, people are actually seeing that we're rebuilding our self-image, right? And prioritizing our self-image, this healthy self-image. Um, Qigong helps to build that self-image, right? When we when we lift Qi and pour Qi down, we're actually creating a center channel that we're not, we're not necessarily born, we, we have to redevelop. And that's the self-image of who and what you are, a divine being that is, is created in the image of peace that nothing can disturb. When we can embrace that idea of who we are, that I don't have to be influenced by the externals, but I can choose to be only influenced by the internal what I am, we can overcome so many obstacles. And people are seeing that key to life within these practices. They're starting to find out that, oh, this is why these practices have been muted for so long. This is why governments have have kept them quiet or wanted to disband those people who are practicing them. Because if I connect with you, if I understand pieces of my nature, first of all, I'm one with you. I'm never going to do you harm. I'm always going to support you. I'm always going to advocate for you. I'm going to advocate for my community and my people, right? When you start moving as one, that's a dangerous, powerful force, right? So we understand the, the concept of true war, right? True, a true warrior is really someone who is, who is, who is passionate about peace. They're searching for peace and trying to rebalance the scales. Qigong is about rebalancing the scales of life, right? Healing that life and having equilibrium and holistic health in your life. Yeah, well, I just appreciate that you dedicate yourself to the work and to bringing it out in communities and particularly black communities. I mean, uh, you know, we talked early on about, you know, you being like, look, I, I needed to get these certifications. I needed to bring this out for my people, not just for yourself, but it was like the need for for black communities to really have someone who looks like them to embrace this, because oftentimes there's a, a large level of, you know, oh, let me stand off. I'm a little bit. I'm not sure what you trying to sell me on brother you know like that kind of you know they're not sure what it is when it's something brand new and um every third saturday you've been practicing qigong at the liberty bank building and we know it's some of it is about exposure i've been there with you right and i i know that people just walking past have been asking wait a minute what is this or what what are y'all doing even sometimes the exposure can really spark somebody's interest to start thinking about it in their lives and practicing it for them. As you uh, have people approach you who are very kind of apprehensive, oh, you know, you're talking, maybe it's witchcraft, maybe it's this, you know, how do you really handle those kinds of, of, of opportunities, you know, to really share this with folks that really may be kind of standoffish or apprehensive of it? The first thing I tell them is super easy right? Anybody can do it. I have children, like I said, from four and five years old that practice with me and adults up to 90 that practice with me. So anybody can do it. Secondly, it's scientifically based, right? And there's thousands of years of research. So, um, you know, when we look at that, that, um, 3,500 years of of practice, um, it makes a difference. Um, thirdly, try it and it works, right? When you do it, you start saying you, you brought up something really powerful earlier in the conversation. You were talking about the DNA of trauma, right? If we apply these these techniques, these simple movements and breathing techniques, we can begin to restructure our DNA, right? So scientifically, it's been proven. Um, There's studies on it. So research it. I tell them to research it, right? And then I tell them to come out and just hang out with me, right? I'm not a weirdo. I'm not a kook. It's like, come out and hang out with me and practice some Qigong. Like, learn how to stand in a place that is going to help your lower back, right? Learn how to relax your shoulders. Learn how to stand proudly. Learn how to breathe from not your chest, but from your lower dante into your belly, right? To calm your mind down and learn how to visualize yourself as you want to be. What's, you know, scary about that? 
right? It's all inviting. I love it. I lo well, thank you so much for being here, being a resource, uh, being willing to be as connected as you have uh, to so many folks who are like, well, I'm interested. I don't know much. You know, I'm brand new. I have seen you be out there having conversations and people go, wait, you meditate, you're doing Qigong. I don't know what that is. How do I learn? Right. Uh, and you, you know, you're, you're open to start with people from a very basic level to those who may even sometimes be like, oh, I know what that is. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna challenge you to, and how much do you know? Right. Uh, so you hit this spectrum, but I really appreciate that you're out there. If folks are looking to connect, you know, participate in some of your open sessions for Qigong. How do they find you? What is the best way for them to connect? Look right there and let them know. For sure. You can find me on the Meetup app. Look for, look for Qigong in the Park. You can find me on social media. You can find me on Instagram at Heru Nefer. Um, on, on Instagram right there, DM me or, or just hit me up for, for a connection there. You can also just navigate to my website, which is heruchayazamen.com. Um, I'm everywhere. So hit me up on those platforms and come out and practice and hang out and do some Qigong. It's free on Saturdays. I don't charge nothing at all. So for free 99, you can get some Qigong, get some Qi healing. Come on out and join us. Right on. Thank you so much for joining me today and bringing this amazing benefit uh, to this space here at the Sankofa Theater. Appreciate you. My pleasure. Let's go do some Qigong. There we go. <laughs> All right.